Lucas and Hudson are walking. Which one of them isn't very smart? It's Hudson. He's staring at the screen of his phone and can miss that cliff and fall over. Even though Lucas is blind, he still has his stick. With its help, he'll know about the edge of the cliff as soon as he reaches it. He's safe. Opal is spending a vacation climbing the mountains. Karis is climbing Everest. Can you tell which one of them isn't smart? It's Opal. Look, she's forgotten about the safety rope and is climbing without it. Not good. Gabriel and Archer are bloggers who take selfies in dangerous places. This time, Gabriel is taking a selfie while surfing a huge wave. And Archer has chosen to take one while standing on the edge of the bridge above the lake. Who is not being careful? It's Gabriel. They're both doing very risky things. But at least Archer has some people around who can help him if something happens. Gabriel is alone in the ocean. It's a very early morning after a party. Egan and Bradley are driving their children to college. Can you tell who's not smart? Egan. His son isn't even in the car. Delilah and Ellery are on vacation. Both of them decided to learn something new. Delilah is skiing in the forest, and Ellery is practicing skating on the lake. Who is in danger? It's Ellery. Look, the ice on the lake is cracking, and there's no one around to help her. She should get out of there as fast as possible. Ariana and Eliza are getting ready for a barbecue party they're hosting. Ariana is making salads outside, and Eliza is decorating the house and the garden. Who's not being smart? It's Ariana. While she's busy with the salads, the meat is going bad in the sun. Karis, a mother of four, returned home and saw that all the teenagers were quietly doing their own stuff. The oldest one, Amanda, was playing Uno, Gabriella was reading, Haven was painting. What was Ainsley doing? Ainsley was playing Uno with Amanda. Take a look at these guys and tell who is behaving stupidly. All the guys on the left, they will all fall in the end. The only guy who will stay on the tree is the one on the right. Detective Callum was spending his holiday in Hawaii. He was having his evening coffee on the terrace when he heard some noise and a scream. The balcony door of the room next to his was open, so he walked in and asked what had happened. A young actress, Chanel, was staying there. She said some man dressed in black and wearing a mask broke into her room and tried to take her away. She screamed, and the criminal ran away, disappearing in the hallway. The actress asked Detective Callum to find the man immediately. But the detective said Chanel could try to fool someone else, and he'd rather return to his coffee. Why didn't he believe the girl? Look at the door of the actress's room. Lots of boxes are blocking it. If the man had indeed run out of the door, he'd have pushed all the stuff out of his way. Otherwise, he wouldn't be able to open it. The girl just tried to make up some drama to get media attention. Adam came to his PE class and told the teacher that, unfortunately, he couldn't work out. He broke his arm the other day. But Adam had a bad reputation. The teacher didn't believe him and told the guy to stop fooling around. Do you believe Adam? Look, he has a cast on his arm, but it's placed over his jacket. It must be fake. Mrs. Miller reported that someone in the neighborhood had run up to her and stolen her bag. 
The authorities interrogated all the neighbors. Bryce said he had been away. I came home less than a minute ago. Arden said she'd spent all day at home and hadn't been outside. Easton said he had taken his dog for a walk, but he didn't steal anything or see anything strange. The authorities arrested one person. Who? They arrested Bryce. He said he'd just come home. But the water in the pot on the stove is boiling. He must have been at home for a while already. Ames worked in a clock store. One day, he called the police. When they arrived, Ames told them he had been working when the electricity suddenly went off. He tried to solve the problem by himself first. Then he called the police. They soon figured out what had happened, and the lights were on again. Ames immediately checked the cash desk. Apparently, while the lights were off, someone broke into the store and stole all the money. But the police didn't believe him and arrested the man. Why? In the store, there were mechanical and electric clocks. But the difference between the time they display is just 10 minutes. Mechanical clocks don't stop when the electricity is off. It means that the lights were off only for about 10 minutes. Ames must have switched the electricity off by himself and then called the police. Nelson was a writer. He was always disturbed by teenagers gathering outside his house and couldn't focus. One day, the man called the police. When they arrived, he said someone had thrown a stone at his office window. He asked the police to officially prohibit the teenagers from coming anywhere close to his house. But the detective didn't believe him. Why? Look, the glass is broken at the bottom, but this part of the window is protected by the balcony outside. Nelson must have broken the window himself to accuse the teenagers. A family was on vacation, and they had no idea what day it was. Dad said, "Eh, I'm pretty sure it's either Monday or Tuesday. Mom added, All I know is that it wasn't Wednesday yesterday. Jake said, It must be Wednesday, or the weekend. Sienna was in doubt. Maybe it's Friday. Ruby said, Friday is tomorrow. Can you tell what day it is if only one statement is true? According to Dad, it's Monday or Tuesday. According to Mom, it's any day other than Thursday. So it might be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Jake is sure it's Wednesday, Saturday, or Sunday. Sienna claims it's Friday, and according to Ruby, it's Thursday. The only day that is mentioned only once is Thursday. It means Ruby is right. Paige and Quinley were sisters. They were hanging out together in their room. Quinley had a crush on a guy from her school. She decided to write him a letter. Paige thought it was a bad idea, but Quinley wouldn't listen to her. Once she was almost done, Quinley went downstairs to get some tea. When she returned, the letter was gone. Paige said that a gust of wind suddenly blew in and the letter flew out of the window. But Quinley didn't believe her and asked Paige to give her the letter back. How did she figure out her sister had taken the letter? When the wind blows inside a room from the outside, nothing can possibly fly out of the window. Colton got into an accident and had memory loss. Kennedy and Isla both claimed to be his girlfriend. They took the guy to the place where they had their first date. Each of the girls hoped Colton would decide she was his real girlfriend. Have you figured out who the guy dated? Look, there are initials painted on the tree, saying C plus I. It means Colton's girlfriend is Isla. In a hotel, someone robbed a rich gentleman. The only witness was Joseph, a cleaning man working in the hotel. He was tidying a room nearby at the time of the robbery. The detective asked the man if he had seen anything. Joseph said, When I heard the noise, I was going to enter the room. But then the door opened and hit me on the head. I couldn't see for a while. 
Joseph even showed the police officer a bruise on his forehead. The detective didn't believe Joseph, though, and arrested him for assisting the robber. Why? The door couldn't hit Joseph because it opens inwards, so he lied. After an accident, Karis was staying in the hospital. Only relatives were allowed to visit her. But three guys wanted to see the girl, her boyfriend, a classmate who was in love with her, and her brother. Each of them said he was her brother. Take a look at the guy's identity cards and try to figure out who her brother is. Her brother must be Philip. The age difference between Karis and Colton is 4 months, and between Karis and Nero, 5. Such an age gap is too small for them to be siblings. Maddox came to the police station to report his cousin, Damon. The guy asked Maddox if he could stay with him for a couple of days. In the evening, Damon asked the host to bring him some fruit from the basement. When Maddox went there, Damon locked him inside. There was no electricity and no light in the basement and Maddox didn't have a single gadget with him that could help him out. Two days later, at 4 a.m., he heard his cousin drive away. It was only later that day that he managed to get out thanks to a postman. Maddox found out that all his money had been stolen. But the police officers didn't believe him. Why? Maddox said he hadn't had any gadgets to check the time. It was also too dark to see anything on a regular clock. Then how could he figure out when exactly his cousin drove away? Hmm. One Sunday, Tom told his brother Dan that he was going hiking with his friend Chris. The next Saturday, the police found Tom unconscious in the forest. Dan said he had been working all week. As for Chris, He was found wandering along the highway. He explained that he had gotten lost in the forest almost immediately after they had arrived and just found his way home. One of the guys was lying. Who was it? Look at Chris. He's too well-shaven for a man who spent a week in the woods. There are five girls in the room. Ashley is drawing, Olivia is reading, Maria is playing hide-and-seek, and Emma is tidying up. What's Sarah doing? Sarah is playing hide-and-seek with Maria, of course. What number is missing? A small hint, it's not number 4. Number 5 is missing. The subsequent number of 234 is 235. In the small town of Sunshine Valley, three teachers went on a sick leave all on the same day. Jenna says she got into a car accident and broke her leg, so she can't walk. Emma complained she had a very unfortunate workout and injured her neck, so she can't turn her head. And Tina says she fell from a bike and fractured her arm. But one of them is lying. Can you tell who? It's Jenna. If she can't walk, why does she even have a crutch to hold her up? If it's raining at midnight, can you expect that in 72 hours it'll be sunny? Nope, in 72 hours, it's going to be night again. In the room, there are two people, both of them sitting. But if one of them stands up, they won't be able to take the other one's place whatever they do. How is that possible? The second person is sitting on the first one's lap. A father tells his teenage daughter, You arrived very late at 3 a.m. and made us all worry a lot. I don't want this situation to repeat. 
His daughter, though, replies that it will never happen again. How can she be so sure? The father was talking about the birth of his daughter. An art expert paid big money at an auction for a painting that he knew didn't cost anything. He was an honest man and didn't have any criminal intentions. Why did he buy this picture? Although the painting cost nothing, its frame was a beautiful and expensive piece of art. A street food vendor has a sign on his stall saying, One hot dog, one and a half dollars. Three hot dogs, five dollars. He knows it's more expensive to buy three, but doesn't change his sign. Why? Each time a customer saw his sign, they would buy one hot dog, then another, and then a third one, totaling up to $4.50. Thus, everyone's happy. The customers think they're clever, and the vendor gets his sales up. During a fire, a bank was robbed. The security guard told the police that he wanted to save a bag of money, but he had to crouch to tie his boot just in front of the emergency exit. At that moment, the door opened and hit him on the head. When he came to, the Hmm? money was missing. Why was the security guard arrested? Well, all emergency doors open outwards. You find yourself in a photo gallery. After looking at the wall, you realize that one of the pictures doesn't belong to the rest. You see a raccoon, a llama, a football, and a balloon. Can you tell which is the odd one out? It's the llama picture. The other three objects have two double letters in their names, but the llama only has one double. There's a barrel of water in the yard. You look inside and say that it's more than half full. But your friend argues that it's less than half full. How to figure out who's right without using any measuring tools or removing water from the barrel? Tilt the barrel so that the water touches the rim. If you can see the bottom, the barrel's less than half full. If the bottom is still covered with water, it's more. Sam and his brother John were always fighting. Their mother couldn't take it anymore and came up with a clever plan to stop them. She told the boys to stand on the same piece of paper in such a way that they didn't touch each other, and it worked. The boys couldn't fight anymore. How did she do it? The woman slipped the paper under a closed door and made Sam stand on one side and John on the other. There is a bridge that is one mile long. It can hold only 5,000 pounds at one time. That's exactly the weight of the truck that's crossing it. The truck reaches the middle of the bridge and stops. Suddenly, a bird lands on the truck. Is the bridge going to collapse? The bridge isn't going to break down, because the truck has already used some gas to get to the middle, and therefore weighs less than 5,000 pounds. A young woman is sitting near the window. At first, she's deep in thought. Then, she suddenly decides to throw something out of the window. A couple minutes later, she drops on the floor unconscious. She's perfectly healthy and isn't prone to sudden faints. There was no one outside to have hit her either. So, what happened? She was knocked out by the very same thing she'd thrown out the window. It was a boomerang that came back and hit her on the head. Well, that was a dumb thing to do. Two men are in a room facing each other. One of the men is a psychic and can see into the future. He predicts that in 10 minutes, the other man will be hit on the back of his head. Of course, shocked and paranoid, 
The other man can't stop staring at the clock on the wall. And exactly 10 minutes later, he's lying face down on the floor. How could it happen? After 10 minutes, the man turned around to see if there was anyone behind him. At exactly that moment, the psychic hit him on the back of his skull. Well, I'm starting to think he wasn't a psychic after all. You walk up to the edge of a forest when suddenly you see a man in swimming trunks, goggles, and a snorkel going out of the thicket and falling on the ground as if exhausted. But you know the nearest body of water is several miles away. How did the weird man end up in the forest? There was a huge forest fire, and the plane that was extinguishing it had to scoop up water from the lake several miles away. Doing it, it accidentally captured the man snorkeling in the lake. He was dropped down together with the water and miraculously survived. Upon receiving an anonymous tip, The police rush to a house where a suspect was said to be. They have no physical description, but they do know his name is John. When the cops reach the place, they see four people sitting at a table. A carpenter, a firefighter, a truck driver, and a mechanic. None of which have name tags on their uniforms. Without a moment's hesitation, they arrest the firefighter. So how did they know that's their guy? The firefighter was the only man in the room. All the others at the table were women and couldn't be named John. A man and his wife are driving down a highway when they run out of gas. So the husband decides to walk to the nearest gas station, which is about an hour's walk away. Before he heads off, he tells his spouse to stay in the car and lock all the doors and windows. The wife, bored and wanting to entertain herself, turns on the radio only to hear some shocking news. A notorious criminal has escaped from prison and was last seen on that very highway where the car is sitting. The reporter on the news gives a very detailed description of the escapee. The wife gets so scared that she quickly turns off the radio. She double-checks all the locks, but when she looks up, she sees the escapee just a few feet away from the car. When the man returns, he finds the car still all locked up, but his wife is nowhere to be seen. How is it possible? The answer is simple. The couple had been driving a convertible with the top down, and the woman wasn't, dare we say, terribly bright. An adventurer found a treasure chest in a cave that was guarded by a pirate. He had three keys, gold, silver, and black. But only one of them could open the chest. The pirate would give the adventurer only one chance to reach the treasure. If he chose the right key, he could take the chest. If he chose incorrectly, the pirate would attack him. The only clue was this cipher. Which is the right key? The cipher is an anagram. Shuffle the letters a bit and you'll get the golden key. The adventurer went away unscathed, and the pirate was left frustrated and treasureless. When you were 10 years old, your parents finally revealed the harsh truth to you. Santa is not real. But you refused to accept that and promised yourself that you would find Santa and prove to everyone that he was real when you grew up. But many years passed and you forgot about your promise. One night, right before you fall asleep, you start hearing a jingling sound. You open your eyes and see a snow fairy. She says, Answer my riddle and receive your letter. What comes with a winter's chill adorned with lights that give a thrill has branches dressed in snowy frills and stands in homes on window sills. The answer is a Christmas tree. 
the snow fairy hands you a red letter and flies away as fast as she can without telling you who uh -oh. it's from. You open it and read, Dear Believer, I know you're wondering who I am. The answer lies in this riddle. I journey forth when stars are bright, in a cloak of night, not a sound in sight. Bringing joy from lands afar, on my sleigh I soar, neath the polar star. Can you figure out who wrote the letter? It's Santa Claus! At that moment, you hear a jingling sound coming from the living room downstairs. You rush there to catch sight of what's causing it and spot an elf waiting for you by the tree with three different gift boxes in front of it. It tells you to pick one of them. Which one should you choose? Take a look at the tag attached to the first gift box's ribbon. It says, Deliver to Thomas Kirtland, age 9. So that belongs to someone else. And notice how the wrapping of the third gift box is damaged from the corners? That could only mean it's already opened. So you should pick the second one. You open your gift box and find a map that shows where Santa lives uh -oh. on the North Pole. You ask the elf, but how am I supposed to get there? The elf says, the answer to your question lies within this riddle. Leading the pack with a light so rare, my shiny beacon cuts through the air. In fog or blizzard, I steer clear. Name me, I'm the sleigh's bright pioneer. Can you tell what that is? The answer is none other than Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Rudolph flies you to Santa's house on the North Pole. But as soon as you land, you realize that you made one huge mistake that might put you and this whole mission into danger. What is that? You didn't get a coat, a beanie, or a scarf to keep yourself warm. Fortunately, you spot Santa Claus's house right in front of you and run there to get warm. But something you see makes you okay. suspicious. What is that? The door to Santa's house is open even though there's a snow blizzard outside. That doesn't seem normal at all. You hesitantly enter the house and start hearing screaming coming from the end of the hallway. You rush there to check what's going on and find out that there's a door. Unfortunately, it's locked with a three-digit password padlock. Behind the door is Mrs. Claus asking for your help to free her. Luckily, there are clues around the place about the password. Can you spot them and unlock the door? The first clue is here. A traditional advent calendar is hanging on the wall with only one window open, showing the number three. This is the first digit. The second clue is right here. A string of jingle bells hangs above the fireplace. There are six bells in total. So that's the second digit. And the last clue is here on the shelf. Take a look at this snow globe. Inside it, there's a tiny statue of number four. And that's the last digit. Once you free Mrs. Claus, she explains to you that the original Santa has been tied up for many days now in the North Pole prison, while the evil Krampus pretended to be him. She hands you a magic key and asks for your help to save him and the holiday. So you set off to this prison, with the right clothes this time. You spot the scary building ahead, and there are three different ways that will lead you there. Which one should you choose? A. The icy tunnel. B. The frozen forest. Or C. The snowy bridge. Uh-oh.
The tunnel is filled with sharp icicles that can collapse at any time. That's dangerous. As for the forest, do you hear the distant growls of wild animals coming from there? Better not risk encountering them. You should pick the bridge because notice the footprints on the snow across it? That indicates someone just used it recently, suggesting that it's good to go. There are three prison cells inside the building, and inside each of them, there is one Santa lookalike. Two of those people are imposters, and one of them is the original Santa. However, you have only one chance, because the magic key Mrs. Claus gave you before will break after a single use. Uh -oh. You must free the real Santa and save the holiday once and for all. Which door do you open? The Santa behind the second door wears a pair of round spectacles. While he fits the image of Santa, his spectacles don't have any lenses in them, which suggests they're more for show than for use. As for Santa behind the third door, do you notice how his beard slightly shifts when he moves? So it's just a well-made fake. So you should free the Santa behind the first door. Congrats, you just saved Christmas. And hey, Santa is real indeed. Johnny and his family arranged a photo shoot to prepare this year's Happy Holiday card. The photographer took three photos of them. But when they checked them, uh -oh. there was something oh, no. weird in all of the photos. Take a look at the first photo they took in the living room. Can you tell me what's weird here? You can see from the window that it's not snowing outside. But check the mirror on the wall here. You can see snow on the reflection of the window. Now, look at the photo they took in the backyard of the house. What's strange here? Take a look at the chimney on the roof. Something stuck there. It's Santa's gift bag. Here's the final photo they took in the dining room. What's odd here? Take a look at the long velvet curtains here. Someone's hiding behind them, but they didn't do a good job. You can see their feet sticking out. Let's just hope it's Santa. Janine's boss was leaving the town for the winter holiday, and she wanted Janine to take care of her mansion while she was gone. Before leaving, she mentioned a security code, which once entered into the system would activate an electrified gate to keep out intruders. During a snowstorm, Janine noticed burglars approaching the mansion, but realized she had forgotten the code. Oh no! Luckily, her boss also left her a clue which read, when trees are bare and skies are gray, Nights lengthen to outlast the day. In this time, the cold winds whisper. What brings this frosty, chilling picture? The answer is the season of winter. So Janine needs to enter the word winter on the digital control pad. Nellie, Peter, and Orly rented a country house to celebrate the holiday season together. Unfortunately, the owner of the place forgot the presents he got for his family inside. Uh -oh. But when he came back to get them, there were no presents. Assuming they got stolen, he called the police. Once she arrived, she asked all three friends what they were doing when the robbery took place. Nellie said she was watching the TV in the bedroom. It was so loud that she didn't hear anything. Orly said she was decorating the Christmas tree with the ball ornaments in her hand. And Peter said he was building a snowman outside and didn't know what was going on in the house. Can you tell who's lying? Orly is lying. Oh, no. There are no balls on the tree. 